So, this is a time for reflection. We described about avidya, we described about the obstacles, we described about the tendencies of mind, modifications of mind and how they get the form of, they attain the form of klishta or a klishta vritti. We have looked at all these things, we need to reflect on these questions. What is the state of my mind? Is most of the time it is fluctuating? Is most of the time it is turbulent? Or am I able to direct it at my will most of the time? Am I a, having a mind which is ekagra or niruddha or I am possessing a mind which is chipta or vikshipta? We need to reflect on this. Do I remain in the klishta vritti or aklishta vritti most of the time? What is my constant background recording? Am I suffering most of the time? Am I feeling anger, jealousy, discomfort? Am I complaining most of the time or I am joyful and creative most of the time? Am I scolding someone in my mind most of the time? Am I complaining about something most of the time? Am I feeling sulking most of the time? Am I feeling critical about people situations around me most of the time? Am I feeling angry about people and things around me most of the time? Or I am feeling a sense of nurturing for others most of the time or I am experiencing creativity, experiencing joy, experiencing and looking at the possibilities of life in myself and others most of the time. We need to take record of these things. What is my constant background recording? Am I into the victim game or prosecutor game? If you want to know more about it, you can look at the transaction analysis. In the transaction analysis, there is a thing called games. These are psychological games. There are prosecutor games, victim games. The, my recording is like a victim and my mind recording, the background recording can be of a prosecutor who is criticizing everybody, finding flaw, faults in the people and things all around most of the time. These are the games which have negative payoff. Generally two people, three people, multiple people are involved in the games and all of them have this negative payoff. We need to reflect on these things. Patanjali say that the vrittis of mind can be turned clished or a clished. We need to do the audit whether most of my vrittis are clished or a clished. When become, we become more aware, we naturally start working towards solution of these things. We naturally start making our vrittis more a clished than clished. Think about the situations when pramanas get dispelled my kleshas. Think about a situation where I did not know about a person that resulted in anger or that resulted in upset, but after knowing the person's worldview or situation, my kleshas, my anger, my klishta vritti because of which I have a suffering that got dispelled. Write down those insights. When 
by knowing a situation, knowing about the situation, knowing about the person, knowing about myself, I became clearer. My suffering went away and that is the sign of Vidya. We need to practice that Vidya more often. Am I consciously using the pratyaksha, the perception, anuman, the inference, shabda, words or testimony consciously to make my life more joyful or make my life and life around me more painful? That is the test whether I am using the pramana vritti in a aklisht way or klisht way. If possible, have frank conversation with your sibling, with your friend, explain these concepts to him or her as well and reflect together. In the corporates, we all the time use 360 degree appraisal. Same thing can be done in the personal life as well. Reflection is a great human power, the great power of the human mind that only can make our life full of well-being. That is the essence of managing self. Think about which viparya, if handled better, can make me more effective in my personal and professional life. Avidya, Abhinivesh, Rag, Dvesh, Asmita, we need to take record of this. We need to audit which viparya, if I reduce I will be more functional, I will be more available to myself and to the world. My well-being is deeply connected with the well-being of people around me. My wellness is connected to the wellness of my surrounding, my social and natural surrounding. So, look at the viparyas and think about what if reduced will enhance the wellness of me and my surrounding. Am I judiciously using vikalpa, nidra and smriti? Vikalpa is imagination. Is my imagination disciplined or indisciplined? Am I able to use imagination and creativity for the, for enhancing wellness of me and people around me or it is diminishing well-being? Nidra and Smriti are the great vrittis. Without Smriti, without memory, we cannot function. But am I imprisoned in the imprisoned of the Smriti or I am actually owner of the Smriti, I am the user of the Smriti. I am using Nidra to give rest to my mind and body or I am actually in control of the tendency of Nidra. Why sometime I know what is right and I am not able to pursue that path. That is called Duryodhan syndrome. So, Duryodhan at, at one some point of time in the Mahabharata says that Janamya dharmam nachame pravritti, Janamya dharmam nachame nivritti. I know what is dharma, but that is not my pravritti, that is not my tendency. Janamya dharmam, I also know a dharma, but that is not my nivritti, I cannot get rid of that. And Dvesh was the most prominent viparya in the Duryodhan's life. Dvesh from Pandavas, at several occasions, even Shakuni, the, the mama of Duryodhan, asked to be generous, just gave away five villages and live peacefully. Duryodhan said that I cannot stand them, I cannot even see them living on the earth. What to talk of, of talk of giving them some villages to stay close by? So, Dvesh was the most important Viparya Duryodhan faced. We all might be facing some or other Viparya. What is my Duryodhan syndrome? Which rag, which Dvesh, which Asmita? may be causing suffering in me, I need to identify that. 
then I need to deal with the vyadhi, sanshay, pramad, alas, because of what reason that viparya is there. We will talk about these things and we will also look at what are the ways of surpassing those. But the first point of surpassing those is recognizing these obstacles. In our team, we are working on the concept of organization healing. And uh, Mr. Aditya Agrawal is pursuing PhD in this. He has come up with the thought that the most important thing in organization healing is recognizing that there is a crisis, eminent crisis or evident crisis. That is the prerequisite for the organization healing and that is not indifferent, that is not different from the personal healing. We also need to know, we need to be aware what is the crisis and most of the crisis about the well-being are self-created crisis. Those are the klisht vrittis, those are the crisis. The viparyas are the crisis. The first step is reflection, recognizing what is that crisis or what is the eminent crisis. What is that viparya which is obstructing me? The first step is self-reflection. <laughs>